be overhauling a clarinet today. But before we get started, I thought I would explain some of the basic tools needed in a clarinet overhaul. First of all, we've got a scraper. This is for removing the key corks from your clarinet. This is a tenon cork scraper, which comes in quite handy. Uh, the, there's two different sizes. Uh, there's a smaller end and a larger end for your clarinet. Now this is a needle spring. Uh, actually, this is a needle spring, and this is an actual needle. If you don't have any uh, extra needle springs to use, you can just use a basic needle. I use uh, this for removing the pads from the clarinet itself. Uh, screwdriver. Um, we also offer a set of smaller screwdrivers on our website, uh, along with the pad slicks. This is a pad slick. Now this is also a pad slick. This one we made ourselves uh, several, several years ago. I like mine bent, and you'll see why later on. Now if you purchase one and want to bend your own, uh, it's, it's easily done. Uh, you can purchase these from bandrepair.com. Now this is a reamer. Uh, we use this sometimes when a, a screw doesn't want to go back into a clarinet uh, key. Uh, sometimes it may have a, a little burr on it. You can ream out the inside of that key and usually the screw will go right back in. Now this is needle nose pliers. I use this for um, removing the screws, putting them back in. This is a professional um, feeler. Uh, I use this uh, quite often. Um, Every pad that I put back on after I've replaced the pads, I, I use this to make sure I've got a proper seal, and I'll demonstrate that later on during the overhaul. This is a duckbill pliers, also used for um, straightening keys, bending keys. This is a needle spring. This is for uh, pushing or... or uh, you can pull the key, the spring back onto the key itself. This is a hole punch. There are times when you may need a hole punch for the number seven key or the top G sharp key. Uh, also, sometimes you you'll need it for the uh, A key on the upper section. This is a striker for our heat source. And our heat source, we just use a basic uh, little propane tank that we bought at our local hardware store. You're going to need a straight edge of some sort and also a screw board. This one we made several years ago. It has 13, 13 holes, both top and bottom. You're also going to need some straight edge razor blades which you can purchase at your local hardware store. Now that we've got the basic tools down, let's get started on the clarinet. So we're about to take apart our clarinet. Now to make this as simple as we can as far as taking it apart and putting it back together for you, we've numbered the keys rather than naming the keys. So in other words, instead of naming each trill key, uh, we've just numbered them. The register key is number, number one and, and so forth. Uh, and you can use this chart whenever you're taking apart and putting together your own clarinet. Now, I always start with the top. Oh, something else I've got to mention is you're going to need a screw board. You can uh, make a screw board very easily just by taking a board uh, drill and, and making uh, um, your own screw board. This one has, I believe, uh, 14 holes in it. You need at least 12 um, holes. Uh, I suggest 13, 14. Alright, I always take apart the clarinet the same way every time. This will be our number one key. Now whenever I put it back together, I am going to put it back together right the opposite of what I took it apart. You can 
get a different pair of needle nose pliers here. They're a little bit smaller. When unscrewing these, any screw, you want to make sure that you have your hand away from the, the screwdriver. I use my thumb as a guide so that if it should slip, it's going to go away from my hand rather than in towards my hand. This I learned from experience, just like so. to loosen each one of these screws and then I'll take them off at once or actually one at a time but I'll show you all right and as I stated each one of these I put this back together by the opposite how I put apart. Now if you'll notice I'm, I'm putting a little pressure on these true keys because the flat springs have a tendency to make them want to pop off or fly off. There we go. due to a slightly bent screw. There could be some buildup inside this, the key itself. Um, once this is clean, that may not. Um, be the same. Or it may have a slight burr in it, which we'll use our reamer. Take your time. Just remember to take it apart as we have them numbered, and you'll put it back together right the opposite. There's a lot of build up inside these, these keys. Now the upper section is taken apart. Start on the bottom section. Always take off these levers first. This one will be the number 13 key on your chart. This one would be your number 14 key. Mm -hmm. 
I'll also clean these screws. The keys will be buffed. And soaked. Washed. This is your 1516 keys. This is usually just one rod. There are a few clarinets that it has two, two separate rods or screws. Now I'm gonna take my spring hook screw out but before I remove the keys themselves from the post I'm going to use my spring hook lift and remove the, the key I always remove the screws closest to the, the bell first that way I'll always know what screw goes into which post. Okay, now this one is a, a, is a little bit tight, so I'm gonna show you one of the ways of, looks, just feels like it's stuck. So I'm gonna get my heat source here. It's just a light flame. You'll notice I put a drop of oil on the, the uh, it, right in between the key and the post itself. I put a drop of oil. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to just lightly. I just I don't want to get the post too hot. I just want to kind of heat up that oil, maybe break that screw loose. Now, when you go back, you don't want to touch that post. Okay, now there we go. Starting to loosen up. There we go. Little trick of the trade there. Be careful removing that screw because that could be hot. I'm going to go ahead and release this spring off of this key also. Yeah, that one was easy. I'll always turn my clarinet back around and remove the screw closest to the bell first. It just is so much easier. knowing exactly what screw goes into what post. This is going to be a beautiful clarinet. Once it's overhauled. It's in bad need of an overhaul. You can get a, most of the supplies that you need from our website, bandrepair.com. Get your pads, your key corks, tenon cork, screwdrivers, spring hook, pad slick. That's bandrepair.com or bandrepair.net, either one. Oh, okay. Um, 
I just noticed that I took this this screw off rather than turning this around so this this key right here actually needs to go here because I'm gonna always I say always sometimes I make a mistake but I want to make sure the same screw goes back into the same post so there there we go now this is going to be a, a rod, a screw. Just because this, this key is lifting up as I'm unscrewing it does not necessarily mean that this, the key itself is bent. There is a lot of buildup, old oil buildup inside of these these keys but they but we will check them and clean them all right lower section is, is done next we'll remove the key corks tenon corks and the pads okay um, now I'm going to remove the key corks and the pads from the keys I like to put me an extra little cloth down here because it makes such a mess. This way I can just pick up the cloth and dump everything into the trash. This is where you need your scraper. Some key corks will come off easier than others. a little bit of pressure at times we'll also supply you with a chart on where the key corks go and what size is normally used. Every once in a while there'll be a clarinet that'll use a different size key cork than the norm. But that's just something you have to go with as far as oh, when you put it back together. It's like, oh, I'm going to need a larger key cork there. Or smaller. If it's too big, sometimes you can just sand it down too. You don't have to worry about scratching the keys as you know. As I'm placing them down here. We're gonna be buffing them. Okay, next I'm going to remove the pads. This is where I need my heat source here. I like to use a really low flame. You want to make sure that you don't get your hands in front of that flame because you will burn yourself. This is a, a, where I use my needle spring. Place this needle spring inside of the cup itself and into the pad and whenever I put the pad over the heat I'm going to apply just a little bit of, of pressure to the pad and it'll just lift right out. Sometimes the pad will come out. When that happens I'm going to need my screwdriver here see here. This is what I... I'll heat up the pad. Don't want to heat it up too fast. I want to remove as much of that glue as I can. Because if I put the new pad back in, I don't want this glue to hinder 
putting in the, the new pad at all. We use, we use shellac here at bandrepair.net. This feels like it may have been um, some type of a hot glue, maybe from even a hot glue gun, but we don't use that. also get kind of messy using that kind of thing. When you heat it slowly and use just a little bit of pressure on the pad itself, it'll just usually just lift right out of there with all the glue intact. And that's what you want. Stated these keys will be buffed and cleaned. Here's another pad that has fell out. There we go. Great. Another reason you don't want to use hot glue when putting in pads because they have a tendency not to always stick to the pad. It's quite messy. Before, careful about getting too close to the flame. This was in bad need of an overhaul. This looks like a new horn. We've got the keys removed, I mean, I'm sorry, the key corks removed, the pads are removed. I'm going to remove the tenon corks now. This is where your uh, tenon cork scraper comes in handy. It's got two different sizes. One size is, this is the, the larger end. The larger end, I usually use it on the, the bell tenon cork. Take your time getting it started. There you go. Usually, once you get it started, you'll just 
work its way around. Now, I'm not using a lot of pressure. It may look like I am, but I'm letting the tool itself do the work. I want to stay as inside of the, the tenon cork area. You don't want to scratch your horn. Take your time. Let the tool do the work. This is this has got a sharp edge. You can kind of go back and scrape it a little bit. Have any excess cork left behind? middle tenon. Take your time. Some tenons come off very easy. Some you have to kind of work with. This is one of those I'm having to kind of work with it. middle tenon, I always use the smaller end. Final scrape. 